movie, I'm going to show you how to use one of my favorite creative apps. It's called iColorama. It's available for iPhone or iPad, but they're two separate versions. You have to buy them separately. And the iPad version allows you to do a little bit more, and it also allows you to bring custom Photoshop brushes in. So I'm working on the iPad version. I'm just going to give you an overview of it here. So at the top, um, I have the little button that says Photo. I'm going to go out and bring an image in. Okay, there's my image. You'll see I have some categories across the top, and each category has subcategories. So for example, when I go to Tone and I go to Enhance, I also have some settings down here at the bottom, such as Opacity. I can adjust the Gamma, increase or decrease the contrast. But then notice in the bottom right, for a lot of these categories, not all of them, I have a preset button. So there are some presets that are already put together, and again, I can make the adjustments, changing the opacity. This particular one has gamma, contrast, and opacity, but depending on the category, they have different settings. One particular category I especially like is style. I'm going to start with painterly, which is one I really enjoy. If I increase the feature and play a little bit with the spread, then I can get a really cool effect. So here I can turn it almost into a drawing, but I can also cut back on the opacity and just leave some of that effect, but bring the original photo back. And again, I have presets I can go in here and apply. So they're preset filter sets that you can apply that give you amazing effects. I love how that looks. Now that might be too much for you, so you can cut back on the opacity and bring back some of the original uh, photo if you want. Edges is another nice one. And I find if I just go in here and slowly increase the size, I can get a really decent line art. Really nice, like a pen and ink drawing. Or I can cut back on the opacity, leave some of that edge detail, but get my original photo back. Flat is another cool one. I'm just going to cut back a little bit here on the feature, and I can get a really nice piece of, uh, almost like a vector piece of artwork. Or cut back on the opacity, keep some of the effect, but get some of the photo back as well. Uh, stamp just basically scares me, so I go right past that one, and I'm going to go to halftone. Not only do I have the ability to change the opacity and the size of the dots, but in this particular case, I also have blending modes, so I can try some different effects with the blending mode. So I kind of like that look, but what if you wanted to apply it to just one part of the photo and you wanted to mask it? So far, everything I've been showing you, I've been doing to the whole photo. On the lower right hand, Actually, that's the left. The lower left-hand side, you'll see it says Brush Mask. I can choose that one, and I've got it set to Paint. Now, I've got a pretty busy photo here, but there's a little button that says Group. I'm going to click that, and I get to choose from some different types of brushes. So I'm going to choose just this basic one at the top, and then the next thing I want to do is click the button next to Group that says Single. Now that I've chosen the type of brush, I can choose different preset settings for the brushes. Choose that second one down, and then I'm ready to go. I can just click um, over here and start painting. So here I am painting the original photo back in again. So what if I just wanted to have everything have that look and not the door? Now I can click the little show button in the lower right hand corner to show my mask, and that way you see what a lousy job I did. And I can go in and change this little button on the left hand side to erase and go in and try and clean up my mess. So there I'm able to just perfect my mask a little bit more, go in here and turn off uh, show so that I can see the effect applied. So I'm having a lot of fun here, but I haven't really saved anything on my image yet. So before we do that, I want to show you in the upper left-hand corner, there isn't an undo button, but there's a steps button. It's very much like the history panel. So I'm going back up here, and I can, if I click that little thumbnail, it's going to take me back to my original image. However, if you look in the upper right hand corner where it says apply, if I apply these effects to my image, so I'm going to go here and apply it. Now I've got another step that I can go back to. So if I went back to the steps now, you can see that I have two to pick from. So every time you apply the effect, you haven't saved your photo yet, but you've applied it to the image. Um, then you can have another step when you go back up onto that little steps button. So it's very much like a history panel that you can go back to. 
So I've been playing around here and I actually brought in uh, a high res image. If you bring in a high res image, you can choose from the different resolutions that you that you get to save it as when you bring it in. And then I'm gonna click on that save button in the upper uh, right hand corner and then allows me to either save it as a JPEG or save it out as a ping file if I want. So this is just a real quick overview, but this is a lot of fun. This is a great app to play with. Lots of features, playing with all the different presets and then using the masking techniques. It's a great little app that I love and it's called iColorama.